Hey, what's up? It's Dan Riccio and Randy Janda as the Calgary Flames are now trailing the Edmonton Oilers 3-1 in their Western Conference series. The Battle of Alberta, it's been all Edmonton so far. And Randy, I got to say, like, I know we we like to upset Oilers fans quite a bit here uh, in these in these episodes. But um, last night, I, I almost jinxed the Oilers. You did. So little known fact, Dan Riccio was doing some voodoo behind the scenes. <laughs> in our little uh, group chat with producer Drew, uh, it's 3 nothing for the Edmonton Oilers. And I say, well, are we doing the eulogy on the Calgary Flames tomorrow? And then, uh, well, we all know what happens after that. Two quick goals and then a 130-foot snipe from Rasmus Anderson gave the Flames some hope. But it was all for naught with Ryan Nugent Hopkins scoring the winner late in the third what's going on with calgary here randy we both you know like their chances coming into this series but it's just all gone wrong what do they need to do to have some semblance of a chance to get back in this series well they need to do a lot but let's start let's start with goaltending this is you know jacob markstrom by reputation and by play he's been amongst the best goaltenders in the league for the last couple of years and especially this past year, you're a reason, there's a reason you're a Vesna candidate. But here's the problem. The Calgary Flames need a very strong, potentially elite Jacob Markstrom to get in this series, to actually do something in the series. And they haven't had that. This is a guy that's allowed at least four goals, at least four goals in eight appearances against the Edmonton Oilers this year. There's one game where he allowed one goal. Everything else, it's been a goals against average of 4.13 against the Oilers this year. They need Jacob Markstrom to steal him a game because simply he's been an absolute wreck in this series. Even when there's moments where he looks good, you know, there's other moments like yesterday, like in, you know, the previous game where he just coughs up the puck and that's a bad, bad mistake, right? You know, that kills your confidence if you're the Calgary Flames. So to me, it starts with Jacob Markstrom. You need your star goaltender to steal you probably one to two games. If you want anything to do in the series, if you want to extend the series, and they simply have not gotten that from Jacob Markstrom. So, you know, Dan, it really does come down to the goaltending for me. I know there's a lot of other gaps in this roster right now when you're comparing it to the Edmonton Oilers, but if you want a chance, you need your goaltender to play up to his level, and he has not done that. Jacob Markstrom right now is the old uh, Trevor Kidd meme where the beach ball is in the back of the net behind him. <laughs> it's been brutal, man. That's how poor Jacob Markstrom has been playing. Didn't expect to get the Trevor Kidd reference in today. That cash is at plus a thousand, but it's, um, it, you know, it's one of those things. Markstrom, we've seen it when, when we covered him here in Vancouver, Randy, when he is not going well, it can get really ugly. He'll make some big saves because he's just so athletic and he can, he can get by, but, you can tell when Markstrom is on, you can tell he's tracking the puck. He's not as jittery in his net. You know, he's a lot more calm and things just sort of hit him. But when he is all over the place, that's when things really get ugly. And we know, you know, the Oilers have uh, some of the sharpest suitors in the league, no doubt with uh, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Kane, all having their way with him right now in this series. And he has to be at his best because those guys are going to get th their chances and he's going to have to make some five alarm saves in order to keep Calgary in this and stretch this series towards Calgary getting three wins in a row. There's really no other chance. And, you know, Ian Clark worked a lot with him here in Vancouver and really settled his game down and quieted it down in the net. I just see a, a guy that's lost his technique. And that usually happens when Markstrom is tired. Maybe he's carrying a bit of an injury. Of course, that is just a little bit of speculation. But when he has gotten fatigued, that's when his game goes downhill. And that's where we're seeing the 63 games of the regular season maybe starting to play a toll on Jacob Markstrom. No question. And you, you know, talked about the history there. Absolutely. I think when he starts to move around a lot more in his crease, and you start to see that, that's generally not a good thing with Jacob Markstrom. The other thing you mentioned, the Edmonton Oilers sharpshooters versus Calgary this year. And I think in the playoffs, if you look at the high danger shooting percentage of the Edmonton Oilers in the playoffs, five on five is nearly 22%. Compare that with the Calgary Flames, that is barely 10%. So when Edmonton gets those opportunities and they're getting a lot of them because they create a lot in the series, they're going to put it past you. They're going to, you know, they've got the capability to do so. So part of this is Markstrom, you know, making the easier saves look more difficult. 
but credit, we got to give it when it's due. Edmonton snipers this time around this year in the playoffs are doing their job five on five. And I haven't even talked about the power play, which is if you keep on giving this team power play opportunities, they're going to score on you. But the scores, even five on five have been doing their job. And that's why it's a huge, huge problem, not only for Markstrom, but the rest of the team as well, because the puck it's, all you know, in transition, Edmonton looks scary right now. And Jacob Markstrom and the flames have no answer. Well, and I know Calgary was, uh, more upbeat than I expected them to be after the game last night, especially Daryl Sutter. Look, they've carried play at five on five, the shot shares, all those different types of things. But if you can't get a save, uh, that's not going to matter too much. Now, the other part of Calgary's game that really needs to find itself for Hendeep, well, we may as well put out a missing persons report for Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk because they've been invisible since game one now sure you know Goudreau has had a couple of chances he had the big one-timer chance and the half breakaway last night Mike Smith makes a couple of good saves on him I think he had four shots total in the game Kachuk like where's he been you know we talked about this in the first round series with Dallas this guy is supposed to be a playoff player he had the hat trick in game one but he's just had too many nights where you don't notice Matthew Kachuk enough and that is just not a recipe that the Flames can overcome yeah, the Hattie was nice, but where have you, you know, been lately? What have you done for me lately? And if even if you look at that big line as a total to start off the series, they have put up 13 points combined in the series, but more than half of those, more than half of those came in game one. Mm-hmm. That is a problem. That's an issue for this team because leading into the series, what did we say? To the best players on the planet against the best line in hockey. The best line in hockey is a term that or a phrase that's given to after a, a really good season, but you know, the perfection line in Boston, they did it for a, a number of years. You have to carry on that reputation. You have to produce in the playoffs, even though Calgary's top line was the best line in hockey during the regular season, they have back it up in the playoffs and they simply haven't been able to do that. So I look at, you know, Matthew Kachuk, he's been very inconsistent. He's been very streaky. You have to deliver in the final few games here. If you want to extend your season and also Johnny Gaudreau, Listen, this is a huge, huge playoff for Johnny Gaudreau. I think the, there's a, a level of paranoia in Calgary of Johnny Gaudreau's got a contract coming. Is it in Calgary? Who knows? Matthew Kachuk, there's been a lot of rumblings there as well. This is a big playoff series for these Calgary Flames because it's going to essentially dictate how we think of this team and how we think of these star players. So beyond even this series, I think the next game, or if they can extend this series, it's going to be a huge impact on all of these guys' careers. So in terms of them going MIA, it's perfectly legit. When you're getting worked, you're getting absolutely worked by the Edmonton Oilers top line, top two lines for that matter. Yeah, and the, the thing is, you know, Calgary, you, you expected some of the depth to come through. I know Backlund's been all right, but where's Andrew Mangiapane been in this series? You know, over 30 goals during the regular season. Haven't really seen him be as much of a threat as you would like him to. Now, you could say that about a lot of the Flames over the last three games that they've lost. And, uh, well, as I said last night in the group chat, are we writing the Flames eulogy officially in the near future, Randy? Are they done? Are the Flames done in this Battle of Alberta? Okay, before Flames fans get mad at me, I'd like to say this Saturday, <laughs> I'd love to work a Hockey Night in Canada up in Jabby game with Calgary Edmund. I, I would love that. Of course. But I think they are done. And this is somebody who was hyping them up before the playoffs started, before the series started. But the problem here oh, is... You're, you're calling it in five? You don't even think the Flames take this back? I don't down. even know. The way they're playing right now, the way that they're... They were gifted a goal on Mike Smith from the opposite end of the ice, and they still could not make it work. Well, the they goalie, also gifted one back the other way. Like, let's they be did, fair. But for sure. But that's a part of it. There's a bigger story here with Jacob Marks. And my point is, in certain moments, the Calgary Flames look lost. And in transition, they look paralyzed in moments when they're dealing with Leon Dreisettle and when they're dealing with Connor McDavid. The Edmonton Oilers power play is still killing them. They went 50% in the last game. You can't score five on five. And, you know, this is a team that's been good at limiting chances during the regular season. But Edmonton is getting their chances in transition. So all of those things on top of that with Jacob Markstrom, arguably your most important player, somebody that we looked at and saying he's going to be the deciding factor because they have an edge in goal. They don't really have an edge in goal right now. So I think they're done. Hey, if they're going to extend uh, the series by one game, I would love, <laughs> love to work this game on Hockey Night in Canada. Up in Debbie. Come on, Flames, do your job. But I think they're done. Uh, well, look, are, are they done? Look, there's a lot of things to like about what the Flames have done as much as 
you know, we've kind of ripped some of the parts of their game that haven't really worked so far in this series. They are controlling play at five on five. I felt that last night they did a better job of slowing McDavid. He only had the two points. You know, one of them came on the empty netter. I was kind How of often is that going to happen though, Dan? It was, it was plus money last night for McDavid. How often is that going to happen? It was plus money for McDavid to go under two points last night. Imagine you took that and he gets the point on the empty netter. Unbelievable. Anyways, enough about that. You know, the Flames, look, look at the numbers. They've dominated five on five for the most part in this series. They have controlled play. They've just got to find a way. Like, number one, they've got to get some saves because you're not going to win if you don't get Jacob Markstrom to have any games in the series above a 900 save percentage. That is priority number one. And I think his save percentage, even at five on five is even worse than below 850 right now. That is just not going to work for this team. That absolutely has to change. But Chris Tanev coming back into this series, I think really rallied the troops to a certain extent because of just what he was going through to be out there on the ice. And he still performed at a pretty reasonable level. I know there was no way he was winning that puck battle with Zach Hyman on the first goal. And, you know, he's, he's just playing out there with one arm, but he can still skate. And what it does is it allows Daryl Sutter to try and avoid having good Branson and Zadorov out there when Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and Evander Kane are there. It helps Daryl Sutter plan his night out. They're going to have last change going into this game five. That's going to help them as well. They are going to extend this series at the same time. I don't see how they stop McDavid from just willing his team into the Western Conference final. He's got three tries to do it. I don't think the Flames can slow down McDavid for three games in a row. So eventually they're done, but it's not as dire as you make it out to be. I don't know. Okay. You talked about <laughs> all of those five and five things. And then just in terms of how Calgary is controlling play, I will go back to that high danger say, uh, shooting percentage. Edmonton, they might not get as many opportunities, but guess what happens when they do? They shoot to score in Calgary since the first round against Jake Ottinger, who played all world. They couldn't score in that round, which is justifiable, which is understandable. Here, you know, they're having some similar luck and especially, and this is where I think it's going to really matter. You can't take penalties against Edmonton this series. We've seen Edmonton do their job. So then you're hopeful. You're hopeful that Calgary can maybe make a series out of this again. I don't know. I think that that fear factor when it comes to Connor McDavid and in transition, especially Edmonton looks like they are skating like the wind and Calgary looks slow. And, and that is something that you can't deal with. You know, Calgary can't deal with right now. How do they slow down the Edmonton Oilers? How do you deny them speed in the neutral zone? That's a very difficult thing to do. We'll see. Thursday night is game five, and we'll see how the Flames respond. Stan Richo and Randy Janda, if you would like to get your comments in on how the Flames get back into this series, whether or not they can get back into this series, let us know in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video.